And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game that's called Overbooked. Oh, you know, when you're ready on getting on the airplane after a long and tiring trip, and they say, we need someone to get off the plane, we'll offer you a voucher of indeterminate amount of money if you get off, and then you sit there, and for me, it has always been a good amount of money when there was no way I could get off the plane, and when I was willing to get off the plane, uh, they never offer. <laughs> so, But that idea of overbooking a plane, and that's what happens in this game, you're running the airline. You get to overbook people. It's sort of thematic in that way. You are essentially trying to use cards to fill your airplane and score points by getting people packed in as tightly as possible. You know that thing you hate? You're trying to do it in this game, but uh, don't run away yet. Take a look at how the game plays. There are piles of passengers who are waiting to get on the plane. We got rugby players who want to sit together. We got senior citizens who want to sit together. We got lovebirds who want to sit together in groups of two, but no more, no less. We got kids who need to be controlled. And then we got, oh, this is the rugby team, sorry. These guys want to sit together. I think the yellow is just a group of, uh, of a school group getting together. But either way, they want to sit together, and players are going to try to score the most points over the course of this game. And they're going to do so by trying to seat players on their own airplane. This is what it looks like for four players. If you're playing one to three players, it's going to look like this. And so players are going to be putting um, different folks on here. On your turn, you take this card here, and you're going to put the passengers on this card on your plane. If you don't want this card, you can pay a meal voucher. Each player starts with six for each card that you would like to skip. And then you take this card. And then if you don't have any meal vouchers, you got to take the first one. If you take a card with meal vouchers, you get them. And they're basically going to allow you to skip cards in the future. After a card is taken, the rest of the cards come forward and we draw a new card. So when you're placing the passengers in, so we'll show this card here. It gives me a yellow, two blues, and a red passenger. And what a player is trying to do is you're going to put these in one of your two sections, or three sections if you're using the other side, but you have to put them in this exact pattern. So I could put a blue, blue, and red like that. I could rotate it, so this would also be a legitimate thing. I could turn it upside down and do this as you put your passengers in like this. Now, the first one's pretty easy, but as time comes by and I get, and maybe I get this one here, and so now I have to put two green, so maybe I put a green here, a green here, a blue here, and a white here. But at some point, you may have to displace somebody, and when you do that, they're just going to go in this stair card next to your thing. You're going to lose points for them at the end of the game. Some cards will tell you where someone has a preference. So, for example, if I take this, I need to put a red and a white, but they want to go next to the windows. So it doesn't really matter where I put them at this point, as long as they're next to the window. Or this one here, where they want to sit in the middle. I'm not sure who these people are. You might get people who want to sit in the aisle. You can also play an advanced variant of the game where the corner will have other things that happen. Like, for example, this gives you an extra point at the end of the game if you take this card. This lets you stretch across the aisle. So this green, green, blue, white could be, uh, you know, green, green, blue, white like that if you want to. So players are going to be filling these up and trying to fill in their sections because empty seats in a plane are bad. When one of the passenger type runs out over the course of the game, then players are going to score. You get five points for each pair of lovebirds next to each other, even front and back. Like these two people are in love, you get five points. Three is a crowd, you get nothing. You get three points for each child that's completely surrounded by adults. So that one is, that one is, because the window counts too, while these two don't get me nothing. Then you pick for yellow, green, and blue, you get one point for each of the biggest group. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six blue. That's six points for that. Yellow, my biggest group is four over here. And white, I mean, and uh, blue, green, my biggest group is the two right here. If you have the biggest group of anybody, in this case, maybe I have the biggest group of blue, those would score me two points each. 
Every two leftover meal vouchers you have is worth a point. And then you lose two points for every person over here. And each empty seat will lose you a point. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Players can also play with event cards that will change various features and give you ways to score extra bonus points. And also these advanced cards, which... Uh, they're just bigger, harder cards to fit in your airplane if you want to. The game is a bit chaotic looking. All right, even if I take off, if I take off all these cards, it's really cool in one sense because hey, it's a Where's Waldo style here, where you can look at the different characters here and see all the little cartoons and ooh, what's going on but as time goes by and as you put all these other things on the table that can get really confusing uh, I mean I like how when you put the looks like I think every single character in here looks slightly different so that's neat it gives you a unique look at your plane itself but whew, they shouldn't have made the the different types of characters the same player player colors but on the flip side, it is a fun little scoring here, the luggage thing, and these cards themselves tell you exactly how scoring works, so that's all well and good. And I didn't find these to be confusing. I thought at first that they might be, but they're pretty straightforward, and there is a lot of them. Uh, the biggest problem component-wise is this start token, which is a tower. It's really cool, but it also falls apart at the drop of a hat. So if you're going to keep it, you'll need to glue it together, but it's literally there just for a start player token. I enjoyed Overbooked. I liked using the cards and flipping them around in different uh, ways to try to jam the different passengers in the seats. Now, it, it did make for some funny moments as you're like, all right, I'm kicking this kid out of the plane and putting this person in instead. And, you know, there's some funny thematic things like, okay, there's two people, they're in love, you put them there and they put a third person in, ruins the mood. But if they sit next to the rugby team, no problem. <laughs> That's And the food vouchers, uh, which may be one of the least um, ways, you know, when you're sitting there and you're furious that you're not able to find a plane and they're like, here's a food voucher. And you're like, thank you. It's one of, it's one of the most least grateful things I've ever got in my life. But anyway, I, the theme is there. Okay, and it's, it's taken tongue in cheek and such. And the cartoon thing helps. But at, the, at its core, the game isn't really about the theme. It's just about trying to put different patterns together. And so you do that. You want big groups of yellow, green, and blue. You want the reds together in pairs. You want kids surrounded by adults. That's, and you want as many full seats as possible. So you're grabbing the cards. What's the best time to grab a card? Do you want to grab a card that uh, you know, fills in a whole pile of seats? Or do you want to take ones that more carefully allow you to put it there to fill them in completely? The game doesn't take too long. Uh, it says 30 minutes on here. Uh, that's if you're just grabbing cards willy-nilly. If people are sitting there thinking about the cards and rotating them, trying to put them in the best position, I'd say it's closer to a 45-minute game, maybe even an hour. But it doesn't feel overly long. And it feels a bit more abstract once you get, you know, okay, focusing. I want to put these colors here and have this next to this. But I like it, and it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of games that do this exact thing. There's games where you fill in grids and try to match patterns, but here you can do whatever pattern you want in a sense. You're just trying to get groups together and lovebirds together and kids surrounded by adults. Uh, it works, and the, theme, and the theme does work on top of that, right? It does make sense in here, except for the people who want middle seats. Are there people who request them? Anyhow. Uh, I enjoyed this one. I think that this is one that's probably going to get overlooked by a lot of people. But this is definitely an intriguing little game that has some fun artwork. Like I said, a little chaotic. But if you don't mind that chaos and how it looks, you will enjoy the cartoony nature of it. A theme that's fun to be on the other side for once. But beyond that, a nice strategic game as you're trying to figure out how to place these in here. Like I said, the rotating the cards around can take a while. But I definitely recommend playing with these special icons in the top. Because that gives you the more options. And I also recommend that you pick a strategy and stick with it. I found that if you try to dabble a little bit in everything, I want kids and lovebirds and rugby players, oh my, you will end up possibly scoring almost no points at all. Having empty seats and you know what have you. But check it out. That's overbooked. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. I'll give you $400 if you get off the show right. No way, that doesn't work this way, does it? Dice Tower judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. 
Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.